Thank you for visiting Pastor Wire TV, the YouTube channel of PastorWire.com. It's thousand words fighting back, coming down to the finish. If a picture is worth a thousand words, this is one stunning picture. Thousand words just in front. Thousand words wins the Robert B. Lewis. Honoree P is full out now, second on the outside. And they're coming down to the line, and thousand words has done it. Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in to another Pastor Wyatt TV episode. I think this will be an interesting episode for, for, for most of you because you'll get a, a, a trainer's perspective, a, a, a rider's perspective, and a and, and, uh, better's perspective on a couple of different, different incidents that, that, that come up in horse racing recently. And uh, it's always good to get different perspectives and maybe learn a little bit uh, of something that may change your opinion or, or how you think about something or, or, or maybe not. You never know. But uh, I think you'll in, in enjoy the show and uh, the different perspectives. And thank you for tuning in and uh, ciao for now. Enjoy the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Pass the Wire TV. I'm here with my co-host, Jeff Metz, and we are fortunate enough to have Jackie Chantal Sutherland on the show once again. She's been on before. It's great to have her back. Um, Chantal, thank you for joining us um, and thank for you. being here. And I got, I got to say, you know, what prompted me, we, we always wanted to get you back on the show anyway, because that was a great, a great, a great show. A lot of people loved it when we had you on, but I felt this was a good time because there were a couple of things that happened on, on quote, horse racing social media over the past week that involved you that I thought were horrendous takes by a lot of the racing fans and, and horse racing social media personalities. So I thought that maybe if we got you on the show, we could use it as an opportunity to hear a little bit more about your perspective of, of, of the two incidents, get Jeff's perspective as a trainer. He's a horseman um, and, you know, has been around the game a long time, like yourself, uh, get his perspective on it. And I'll weigh in a little bit with my perspective as, a, as, a, as primarily a better and a gambler. I've owned horses, but I've been a better, you know, most of my, most of my life. And I've got a take on it as well. So I think it'll give a well-rounded take on the um, two incidents that I think just social media, for the most part, the majority of people just got dead wrong. Um, so thanks for coming on and being willing to talk about this because we talk all the time in the game about transparency and interaction with, you know, the stars of our, our sport. Obviously the horses can't talk, the riders can. So when a rider does um, interact and talk and come on these podcasts and, you, you know, interact with people on, on social media, I think whether you agree or not, people should be polite. So thank you for coming on. And what's your take on that whole interaction thing? When fans demand interaction, then when you do it, they kind of blast you. Yeah, I think, you know, everyone has their opinion, they're entitled to it, but when you do allow and divulge more information about what really goes on or what's happening and you, you know, give a little window to the people who may not see or experience what I do in a race, you hope that it's taken um, and as, as interest and, and people enjoy it, but when people really hammer you, it just makes you want to not get involved or express or let people into to see what it's really like out there. And 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 I and I, I thank you for for you know feeling that way and being honest about it, but yet still coming on the show and giving us a chance to talk about you, you know these two two races and explore it a little more. The first one involves a horse I believe named Barbara, um, who I through my own investigation or lack of a better word, I wouldn't say it, I know has a, a habit of taking a little bit of a stutter step. Uh, yes, and, yes. 
Okay, I, I'll give you my perspective of, of, of the race, okay? Um, you were on the lead, uh, they were turning for home, there was a horse outside of you, and Barbara decided for whatever reason, as, a, as a, someone who's been watching races for 40 something years, just decided to bear out coming out of that far turn. I've seen it happen a hundred times. Um, to, my, to me, as a, as a race watcher and a better, I'm like, oh, well, what are you going to do? It happens. You know, I'm, I'm glad I didn't have the horse on the outside, you know, who got carried out because it was unfortunate for that horse. But I immediately took it as there was absolutely nothing you or any rider ever could have could have done about it. And I would challenge any any exercise rider or jockey to say anything different. So explain a little bit about what happened. And am I right? Am I wrong? And Jeff, you weigh in. No, can't tell. No, you're right. And Barbara and herself is a very interesting filly. She's temperamental. And we've always tried to find what surface she likes because she does do what you said. It's like it looks like a starter step, but it looks like she's almost like the rounds breaking away from her. And she just it, it, that's just the way she moves. And um, there's nothing wrong with her. We've taken on dirt. We've we were trying turf uh, to PETA. She just is kind of the way she moves. Um, everybody's better runners than everyone else. But for some reason, in the first turn, you know, on that tapita, the tapita is white and the rails are white. So I don't know if the horses, they can't really see the rail or they just see wide open space. They don't know how it corners. I'm not really sure what they see out there compared to the turf where it's green with white and the dirt's like the brown with the white. They see the rail. She just, at the beginning of the first turn, she wanted to get out. Then on the backside, she was okay. And then um, she idled, relaxed for me. And then to the turn again, she started doing it a little bit. Wasn't bad. It was controllable. But then when I finished going out of the turn, about when Luis started coming on my outside, I don't know if she didn't like him on her outside. And she has a tendency to buck and double barrel and kick other horses. She, she doesn't like horses near her. I don't know if she was going after him or she saw something. The Jumbotron has just been rebuilt. It's huge now. And there are signs on the inside fence that have a reflection. And at that time of the day, there's a lot of shadows. It was the end of the day, it was the last race. There's a lot of reflection. I don't know what she saw, what she did or why she did it, but it's not like when I pulled with my left hand, a horse normally will like turn its head and I can pull and I have a bit of maneuvering, but she didn't, she just went straight. So it's like pulling on a wall. Like it's just, it's not moving, it's not bending. There's no flexibility and it's just, she went straight. So I didn't know if she's going to go over the fence. At this point in the race, I'm not really worried about Louis Saez. I'm worrying about my life and whether I'm going over the rail or if I'm going to make the course. And she kind of like, I flagged her and I hit her on the shoulder thinking she'll yield to my stick and respect it. And she did for a second, but then went again and then had her a little bit, then went again. So I'm like, I don't know if she's going to go all the way or not. I almost hit both outriders. They had to turn their ponies sideways. And after the race, I just let go of the rain because I was ex like exhausted from pulling so hard. And it may not look like I'm pulling, but when a jockey's pulling really hard, they're not racing. They're not pushing. I'm pulling and just trying to like coordinate her. At this point, I'm not trying to win the race anymore. I'm just trying to make the course. Um, and uh, also galloping out, I let her hit the rail. I let her see it, hit it physically. Um, at the race, when we're going in that top speed, I don't want her hit it at that, at, at that kind of speed. So galloping out, I, I let her hit it to see, like let her know that it's there. Right. Uh, as far as how I could explain how to control that, I mean, these are 1400 pound animals. I'll tell you, I think I'm pretty strong. I can do 60 pounds in each hand, but that wasn't enough. Yeah, this it was uh, enough, I made the course, that's it. Right. Yeah, definitely. Like I'm sure you and other jockeys, you know, at that point, like you said, you're thinking of the safety of yourself first, the safety of that horse, and then the safety of the riders around you. Because at that point, winning the race is just totally the last thing on your mind. It's just yeah. survival at that point. And the thing, unfortunately, with these horses, as Chantel said, boy, when they get spooked, they don't even have a good self-preservation. Uh, yes. They just, they just, they'll run through a brick wall. They'll run through stall walls. When they get something in their mind and they want to go, there's just nothing you can do. And I, it doesn't matter how strong you are or what kind of equipment you have on the horse. Um, it could, it could be really dangerous. So. I mean, I'm glad you came out of it. 
Yeah, Please. no, for sure, for sure, it's a, it's it's a it's a dangerous situation. We know the sport is is inherently is inherently dangerous. But what I just thought was the terrible take was, you know, there there, there were a lot of people that, like myself, watch a lot of races that just had a different opinion and thought, oh, there was something that the rider could have done to prevent that, or, um, you, you know, maybe another rider would have been able to stop it. And I, I, I'm like, no way. It doesn't matter who's on a horse when a horse decides that they're going to do something, um, even if it's something that you don't want them to do, there's really, I mean, it's one of the dangers of being a rider. And one of the reasons why ambulances follow riders around a racetrack is because, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff or Chantal, if a horse decides to do something, there's no rider, no matter what size, no matter, no matter how experienced that you could really do about it. I'm like, I, I mean, is that incorrect? No, I think you're right. And even like a horse um, that is scared of going to what Jeff said, they don't have self-preservation. When there's a fire in the barn, you let the horses out. They'll run back into their stall. Like they don't have the sense that we have. They don't realize what they're doing and they don't have a conscience. If they kill you or themselves, or mostly if they kill you or kick you in the head and they, they kill you, it's not like, they, oh, I feel bad. They, they're just going to go eat grass and live their life. It's not... They don't have the mindset that we have. They don't know that that's dangerous. They don't know that if I hit the rail, there's a big slope out there and we're both going to fall down over that slope. And, you know, one of us could die or one of us may be okay, but it's, we're going to hit hard and it's not going to be, it's not going to be good. And the I, other thing is that, you know, you, you've seen it in races when a horse, you know, their saddle and the stirrups are so small, you know, for weight, uh, but just even a, a jockey that, can use the weight the saddles are still small and you see when a horse is like really pulling the rider down the backside and that sometimes yeah. they're eating the dashboard so much that the saddle pushes up the neck and then you just have no control of that horse but again i mean you're talking about getting in dangerous situations with like very little uh you know size saddle or equipment to work with and the bit that's the jockey's main connection with the horse i mean it's actually in the rules and regulation. It's one of the safety equipments is the bridle and the reins. But uh, sometimes, yeah, it's funny, yeah, sometimes funny it's funny enough. Not and funny enough to, to your point, I had a soft bit. <laughs> like mm. not, and she's you know she's a young horse, and me, I prefer a ring bit on a baby, just because you just just in case kind of thing. Um, other That's people my, say my, no, but a soft bit. Explain a soft bit. That's like nothing. Yeah. Well, you know, so the soft bit is soft on their mouth. And when you pull it, it you don't get as much reaction. But my opinion um, and, you know, <laughs> is that uh, the bit is as soft as the hands behind it. So even if you have a stronger mm -hmm. ring bit, if you have nice light hands, it's not hurting that horse's mouth. Yes. As long as the rider has nice light hands. You know, you know it, 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 it's funny. The takes I, I, I just thought was so, were so bad and so wrong on, on, on that, that it surprised me that many people didn't realize that. I mean, we've all seen disqualifications where they'll show the head on, where a horse is getting in or getting out down the stretch, and the jockey is doing everything humanly possible to try and stop the horse from lugging in, pulling, pulling the reins, leaning, hitting this, and, and the horse just continually lugs in. So, okay. By, by that argument that people were raising against Twitter, all those jockeys could have could have prevented that. And they all uh, and I don't, know, I don't know if uh, Chantal, if you had gotten on the horse in the morning, had, had you? Or? I have. I have been you, on you knew that the horse like you, you had mentioned that the horse would kick other horses and stuff like that. Yeah. And I think as a as a trainer, sometimes you you say we got this filly that's very cantankerous. And so we're going to put a girl, a female jockey on because she's going to be more, you know, quiet and she's going to be more uh, help this she's going to be a good fit for this horse as opposed to a guy that might be a little stronger less patient and they're going to get after maybe you know be a little too strong for this horse and and again when it did come to strength it's not a case of holding them in because you're stronger it's just yes when they go they're going to go so you know, I you know like you said to, to that note i think she actually possibly could have resented the crop and maybe and I've had a colt that I've, I've hit with a crop and they've run into it. Okay. It's more, they're like against it. So then you, you, it's fine line. You gotta, you can't use it. Um, I don't know, but she did do it before I had hit her uh, with the crop. So I think she just saw something or, or else she really didn't like Louis size on the outside of me. And also that being said, when Louis was on my outside, 
I was having trouble the first turn. Luis is a further back in the race. And then on the second turn, there was a horse between us. And then Luis came to my outside. He had not seen how much I was struggling until he was already committed. And it was too late for him to get back in, inside. And I don't think he realized the horse was going to do it that much. And neither did I. So I think when we went in the steward's office, he was cool about it. And just like, yeah, I could see she was struggling. And I'm sure he's like, damn it. I wish I had of gotten to her a little bit later I could have went inside and but he was already you know he's already locked in like his feet were and every time he approached more she went out more and she wasn't going to let him pass it was kind of crazy and I'm sure the fans had bet on Luis and like he's been winning like crazy and I'm sure I screwed up a couple uh pick two or exactors and exactor or trifectas but um you know <laughs> it had my you, you plan told- was to win if she stays straight, I win. Like yeah, no, it 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 ha- you know it's it, it it's really part of the game, and I think some of the bad takes are just people don't understand that you know horses, you know they're, they're animals. There's 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 a degree of unpredictability um, in well, running look at, walk, yeah. look at some people walk their dogs. Their dogs a Chihuahua, and they can't handle it. I mean, imagine yeah. a bull or a Doberman or a a Great Dane and one that just sees a squirrel. I'm glad okay. you, I'm, I'm glad you said that, and I'll tell you why. It, it's a, it's a perfect example. Okay, I have a bunch of dogs, and I I work with dogs that have been abused and and, and rescues and stuff like that. And I have I have some guard dogs. I have Connie Corso and Rottweiler um, that are wow. killers, and I've got Chihuahua rescues. Okay, now my dogs are very well trained. Okay, and I'm an excellent trainer and a very responsible dog owner. Um, but if I go, and my dogs are great together. Like I bring in new, we just brought in a new rescue to, Chihuahua that was a stray, abandoned in the street. Somebody obviously dumped her. Nobody was going to adopt her. Um, mm-hmm. She was pathetic. We brought her into the home and she's a, a queen within a day, okay? She's terrified and shivers. You, she won't even look at you, but she's starting to come out of it and we're working with her. Now, my dogs, my Rottweiler and my Connie Corso, they'll kill anybody that comes in here if they're not supposed to be here, okay? Yeah. But, and they're great when we bring in these rescue dogs. They know it's a rescue. They've learned how it is. They protect her. They guard her. They're as gentle as can be with any of the other dogs I bring in. Okay, because they know. But yet, if I'm going in the other room to work out or if I'm going in the backyard or if I'm doing something else or in here right now, okay, my dogs are in. I don't have them together because as much as I love and trust my dogs, they're dogs. They're unpredictable. You don't know what could happen. What could spook one? What could what she could do, or one of the other ones could do to the to the Rottweiler kind of so that you don't know. You know that's why I see people they'll leave their kids with their dogs, and they'll you know the dog will bite the kid, and they'll say, "Oh, that's tough." Well, you don't know that the kid didn't poke the dog in the eye or do something accidentally, or you know, I, I saw a video once of, 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 of everybody was laughing on Facebook of a kid who was riding a Rottweiler like it was a horse, you know, and the mother's bragging about it. And I'm like, that's just a disaster waiting to happen. And you're going to blame the dog. And it's not the dog's fault. Animals, whether they're horses, um, dogs or anything, there's a level of, of, you know, that you can't predict or anticipate and, you know, my dogs, even with me, if my Rottweiler and Connie Corso, I'm sitting out by the pool and they decide, you know what, we don't like him anymore, we're going to kill him, and nothing I'm going to be able to do about it. You know what I mean? No matter, you can't say, oh, well, you raise dogs and you train dogs like a jockey drives horses, you know what I mean? You're supposed to know what to do and what to be able to do. Nothing I'm going to be able to do. There's a, a level of trust and a, 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 a degree of, of, of danger in anything you do with a, with, with a powerful animal. And a racehorse is what 12 1400 pounds yeah and, and, yeah, and you're also you're going 30 35 miles per hour and also yeah. matt jeff we like we don't, we're not on these horses every day like trainers are on their ponies every day but i'm i see this horse once a month and i see him for 20 minutes that's that's what i was i was gonna say that you can hear it now thing was uh, for for yeah, the jockeys when these horses do this i mean it's a split second thing i mean you don't have a lot of time and even when it does happen you don't have a lot of recovery time so when these things happen yeah. i mean like the horse coming next to you i mean sometimes it happens so fast and they're they're right next to you and there's nothing right you can yeah and, you, and you're and talking you hope your their legs don't get yeah. tangled up so 
Sure. And you're also watching the race, you're watching the replay. But in my life and in real time, we're talking we're a quarter of a mile. We're talking it had 18 seconds to uh, evaluate and react and handle my situation. I had 15 to 18 seconds in that time period because it's what with a quarter of a mile, you get 21 seconds, 22 seconds. So I have 18 seconds. How fast is that for you? If you get to watch the replay and you get to see it over and it's not for us, it's, it's, we're seconds making decisions and choices. Right. And, 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 you know, but even if you have more time, I mean, what, what, what can you do when a, when, when a racehorse decides to get out like that? I mean, I mean, even, even as a trainer, Jeff, I mean, you, you do everything you can to try and teach them or, 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 or correct them, but there's some people that are going to do what they want to do. Like she said, you know, sometimes we'll have the jockeys come in the morning and get to know the horses. So especially first time starters. So they know what they're, any idiosyncrasies. Once you've ridden an older horse a time or two and it has a pattern, you you know about that horse. But a young horse or a horse with first time or second time starters, there's always nuances that are new. So if they could get on, if the jockeys could get on the horses in the morning, get to know them and they can give us feedback and say, hey, you know, maybe try this, maybe try that. And one of the things that I hate as a trainer is a horse that wants to get out around the turn. Because whenever I say when a jockey has to hold them in, it's like riding with the brake, driving with the brakes on. And so a lot of times we'll try equipment, maybe an outside extension blinker or something. But if that horse can just run around the turn as opposed to the jockey having to hold it in, now you're not like driving with the brakes on, as I say, and you actually can keep flowing along in the race. And uh, but uh, I guess that would lead us to this this next uh kind of topic that we were uh, going to talk about, about jockeys when they're out in the race and, and when a horse starts to get tired. Um, could you tell us some of the nuances of, of what happens? Because, uh, John, you want to explain um, where we're going well, with this? Yeah, the, the, other, the, the, the other thing that I wanted to touch base on was um, a podcast that you did. And I, I mean, no disrespect. I, I, I think it was called Racing Radar. I don't know. I only saw the clip um, yeah. that people shared on social media, but I believe it was Racing Radar. And if I could find a link to it, I'll put it on this so people can see it if they want to watch it um, and give all credit to that other show, which, like I said, I believe is Racing Radar. Um, it was a podcast, I think, that you did where you, you mentioned something about giving a rider room when you had no horse left at all, telling them the, the, the rider, go ahead, go. He was loaded went on, win, win, win the race, and you made a comment, something like, well, you know, it was race riding, whatever, now he owes me one, one day, you know, he'll, 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 pay, he'll pay back the favor, that rider will pay back the favor, and I took it very casually, I didn't think anything was so earth, earth shattering about it, um, I knew that some, some players might get the wrong idea and just have like a negative take on it because there's just so much negativity attached to the sport. But having been around the sport a lot, I know that that's a case by case basis, a basis, I believe. And again, correct me if I'm wrong, that there are times that when a rider will decide to give another rider room, there are times when a rider will decide not to give another rider room. And that's a case by case basis. And there are a thousand different things that may go into that. And at the end of the day, like somebody said, <clears throat> well, um, you should really not give anybody room because a horse that wound up fourth might have been third had you not done that. I'm like, yeah, but, you know, there'll be a time that that horse will wind up third and not fourth because of the same thing. So in the end, it all kind of, you know, it's, it's just a case by case basis and it's not collusion or race fixing or, or you know, anything that's inappropriate or or even 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 a conflict you know um I, and at least that's how i took it and like i said i'm giving it from a, a better perspective you know sometimes yeah do i see a rider do something that i wish they hadn't done because maybe it gave me a better chance to cash a ticket absolutely but that same rider a, a month from now or a week ago or, or the next day may do something that will make me cash a ticket you know what i mean so it's you know, I just thought it was just a terrible take when people started bashing you saying, oh, wow, she she gave a rider room to get out and that's delusion. And now he owes her one and that's race fix. I, I thought horrible take. So you you two weigh in from the horseman and the jockey perspective, trainer perspective. I'll let you go first, Chantel, just to see, uh, you know, what it's like out there on the track. OK, so. 
when I'm out there on the track, I'll tell you, I'm about myself. I'm very competitive and I'm going to do my best for my trainer and my horse. That's my team. If you choose me, I'm doing everything in my power to win for you. Second, third, fourth. I got to get in the money. I got to pick up a check. My goal is laser focused on that. What I have to do in a race and my also ultimate goal as a jockey is to make friends out there. If I make enemies, it's going to be a lot harder for me to get through in certain situations. And jockeys, uh, like he, all humans, when we don't like someone, we don't make it easy for them. It's better when you have friends and it's not that they're making it easy for me. They're just not making it hard. Um, as for example, uh, in this one instance uh, that I think we're talking about, I know my horse was stopping. I had another jockey boxed in. He had nowhere to go. There's a wall of horses in front of him. All I have to do is step out a little bit and let him know that he can go. If I don't let him know he can go, he, he's not going to cut me off because he doesn't want to get days and he doesn't want to make me clip heels. But if I step out a little bit and I let him know he can go, that, that he's, it's okay for him to cut it tight. And that's what, what he had to do to get out at that point in the race in order to win. I wasn't on a horse that could win. I wasn't on a horse that could be fifth. The horse was stopping, but not fast enough to let him out. Just, just enough that he was stuck. And for me, and I would want all trainers, all owners to know that I'm making friends because there's going to be a time when I need a favor. And I don't know if everyone in the world asked a friend for a favor or a person for a favor, he doesn't, the other jockeys don't have to give me the favor back, but when there's the moment that the opportunity uh, presents itself, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get the favor back. I may not, but that's okay. I'm still taking that chance and I'm not being a jerk and I'm not holding him, this other person in on a dead horse. I'm not going to lay on a dead horse. It's not going to make it anywhere and hold that guy in and make him go behind a wall of horses and stop with all of us. You know, if I don't particularly like the jockey and the jockey hasn't been nice to me, Oh, he's going to come back with the wall and he's going to be held in because I'm not weak. I'm not super, I'm friendly, but I'm not super, uh, letting everybody have a pass. Um, if somebody doesn't give me a pass, they're not getting a pass. If somebody gives me a pass, I'm willing if the opportunity presents itself and it doesn't, it's very rare when it happens, but when it does, it's always a good idea to make friends. I, I think um, I've always said on horses that kind of come off the pace or come from behind. Um, I see this all the time and, you know, it's always different whether it's a high level race or maybe a lower claimer race, but when a horse is, you know, making up ground and usually the horses that get tired and are dying are towards the rail. So when they try to come up the rail, they're really hoping something will open up. And sometimes they have so much horse that they just bull their way through there and they make their own hole. But um, invariably, I mean, not that you want to go around every time because you're losing a lot of lengths going around. But I mean, if you're loaded with horse, oftentimes you have so much the best horse that you can go around and, and it works out. But trying to weave through that traffic of tired, dead horses, that, that's got to be tough. So, I mean, like you said, if you don't say something like, hey, I'm stepping out. And, and then, like you said, they're just going to run up the heels and, and either cut you off or not go. So, and I, I could see, you know, people, certain tracks that have an infield they people might go on the rail and go down the backside and watch the, the jockeys go by and it's kind of funny that there is some talking going on out there and there is some hey hey i'm right behind you i'm right behind you i'm inside of you you know so that way you know where people are so they're not always looking back and looking back to see where everybody is you know there's some talking going on out there and i don't think people realize that that the jockeys actually have to communicate while they're in the race because sometimes they're in such a bad spot they got to let them know I'm coming up your heels, so I want you to know because I have absolutely no control of this horse and they're coming through. Yeah, and also too, when a horse has momentum and rhythm, like I was in uh, a race the other day and on the grass in particular, the common sense is that when horses get tired, they, they like everyone likes to hug the rail, but if you're riding the rail and this would be a tip, which I would don't want to give, but naturally horses that get tired they start to float off the rail it's harder for a jockey to hold their line and hold the rail so they start to float and as soon as that happens you can get through so usually at the end of the race if you're riding the rail and you take you have the balls to do it 
you know, you might get through late, but you're going to get through the rails going to open up or it's going to open up and then you can swing out and go through because the race at the end of the race usually flares and you're going to get more flaring and you can get movement if you're rolling. That being said, when you're rolling on a horse coming late, you can't get stopped like because you have such little time to get to the wire. So you really have to really see ahead, time it and see where the line, where everyone, the movement's happening and hope that you get through. The other day I came up the rail and Romero was uh, a jockey he was on a horse and he was slowly, like he was stopping and he just started hitting right hand with his hand, head down. And just as I'm going to pass and I'm already in, he just slams into me on the rail and stops my, like I just get stopped completely. And it's unfortunate because you know, he, he's not finishing anywhere and he really was, this person wasn't really paying much attention and just trying to get his placing, but he had his head down and just let his horse drift so late in the race. And every jockey knows that wherever you are, just stay in your lane because on the grass, everybody, they're coming flying from behind. So just stay in your lane, but you know, we can't, not everybody stays in their lane. Jeff, as a trainer, what would you say to the, all, all the people that on so on, on on social media that were complaining about giving that rider room because it affected other horses in the race that maybe finished, like I said, fourth that maybe would have been third or second or or, or fifth, and, you, know, you know that it affected their placing because a rider gave another room. What's your take? You're a trainer. You want to win. Your owners want to win. You want to win for your owners. You're all in, okay? So when that when a rider does that, what's your take as, as a trainer and professional horseman that you could say to people that are up, upset over that or feel that it's some type of collusion or, or race fixing or it uh, uh, affects the sport? Maybe you can explain it as, from a trainer's perspective so they, so, they so, have a better understanding. So obviously, uh, like... I'm a trainer, I'm competitive, uh, I wanna win. But once you get to that point, so let's say Chantel's on my horse and the horse is dying and now I'm the trainer of that horse. We're gonna run eighth, ninth or 10th. We're not gonna be on the board. We're not gonna get a check. That's just the way it is. So for to ease out and let a horse come through on the rail, now, if I was had a different hat on and I was a gambler, now that would be maybe a different scenario. But you're asking me as a trainer. And as a trainer, I would want the safety of my horse that she's on. And I would want, you know, just get out of the way. This horse has momentum. You know, he's loaded. He's either going to run you over or he's going to bull his way through. So in this case, you step out a little. That horse goes on. It's no harm, no foul to me as the trainer of that horse because my horse was dying. He got tired. We're just got, we want to be safe. We want to live to fight another day and we want to come home in one piece. We don't want to get stepped on. You know, when they're going 30, 40 miles an hour and their legs get stepped on because horses are bowling their way through. I mean, that's not a good scenario because maybe that horse bled. Maybe he lost a shoe. Maybe he grabbed a quarter coming out of the gate. There's so many variables of why he was stopping at that stage of the race. But we can find that out at the barn after the race cooling out or the next morning, maybe something will show up. So as a trainer, I have no problem if the horse is dying and you have to ease out and let somebody get through. So that way you don't get trampled and run over. I mean, because otherwise you sit there and invariably, if you were to sit on the rail and just block it with a dead horse, you're going to get run into. You're going to get run over. And let's say we take this one step farther. She comes back in three weeks, rides the same horse. She didn't let him through. Now he says, I know she's not going to let me through. So I'm just going to bull my way. So maybe I didn't get stepped on that day, but in three weeks from now, I am going to get stepped on because yeah. of what she did. And I don't blaming her, but I'm just saying the scenario plays itself out is you help someone out today. You might be that person on the side of the road that needs help next time. And so you just want to play it as safe as possible for everybody. So when you are in dire straits, you don't get ran over, uh, you know, in case that same scenario played itself out again. I, 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 I agree. And, you know, you, you said if you were better, you may feel differently. I'm a better. And, and I, I didn't have an issue with it. I mean, I've been on all sides of that coin with wagers at, at one point or another. I've seen, you know, riders 
you know, get out of the way and give a horse room and, and not. And I've been in every possible scenario that, that surrounds that, that particular situation. And I take it on a case by case basis. Do I get frustrated when it costs me a bet and, and I lose? Absolutely. But do I think it's, you, you, you know, something that shouldn't happen or that the rider did something wrong? No. Sometimes I wish that they, they didn't give, you know, the other rider room. Sometimes I wish they did. If it's my horse trapped and he can't get out and can't get out. And I'm like, ah, I wish somebody would give him room. Doesn't always happen. Like, like Chantel said, you know, sometimes it does. Sometimes it, 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 it doesn't. It's one of these. I, yeah. And I think to add one more thing, even if I hadn't let this rider out at that point, there were two more jumps and I was not going to be able to hold him in anyway. If I wanted to, he was going to get out. So the next thing that would have happened, he wouldn't have won. He would have been second. So whoever's crying about third and fourth, they're going to be fourth and fifth. So you're right. lucky one and you got second and third. Right. And I think part of the problem getting is, out at some point. Of, just yeah, no, and I, and I get it, but I think part of the problem is like words. Okay. Like you said, Oh, well, someday maybe, you know, I'll need a favor. And I think people take that word and maybe it's, it's not the wrong word. It might not be the best word to use to okay. for the fans, if you know what I'm saying. You know, I mean, I it may just be a trigger point. I don't know. I'm just yeah. trying to guess why it was just taken the way it was, you know? I, th I think it, that that's social media in general. I think, you know, when people can voice their opinions, they could be on either side of the, the table and, and they feel, hey, here's a chance to, you know, voice my opinion on this. And, and you know, it, there's always going to be two sides, but I don't care. It could be the nicest, uh, you know, thing out there and somebody could find something wrong with it. So yeah. Yeah. See, nobody, no jockey owes me anything. And I don't, I owe no jockey anything, but I guess the word for me favor is like, I was cool in a race and I'm a cool jockey. And if you're cool, it's cool to be cool. It's not right. cool to be a jerk. And I think it's better to be kind and cool because some cool things could happen to you later on in a race that come back. And I think, you know, you have these certain jockeys that, that ride tight or they're always putting you in a bad spot. And I think, you know, they're not going to let you through. So then you're always having to play this cat and mouse game. And, and I think that the horses are the ones that suffer, you know, and then the horses, yes. the, owners, the yes. trainers. But that's why when I think, you know, if, if you just, like you said, you play it cool. So down the road, if you need something and you're like, hey, hey, you know, they'll, they know you're there. They're not going to slam you. Sometimes yeah. they have their head down and they do it by mistake or, you know, they're, they're still learning some jockeys, but yeah. And you say, hey, you know, when your horse is dead, watch what you're doing. And I agree what you say. A lot of times horses get tired and they float out. But, John, if we go back to that little point, you say, oh, as a better. Well, you know, sometimes let's say the horse you have, whether you're the trainer or the better, and you're laying mid-pack and your horse starts winding up at the three eights and he's coming with a run. Now you're going to say, is he going to get through on the rail? Are these horses going to float out, get a little bit tired? Are they going to, is some seam going to open up and are we going to time it just right to get through? Because the minute you tap on the brakes at that point of the race, that's what costs you seconds and thirds, seconds and yeah. wind. And maybe you get totally stopped and you can never get your momentum going. I don't care how agile the horse is. They just can't restart that big momentum of a 1200 pound animal. So, um, you know, uh, was there anything else, John or Chantel, that you wanted to bring to this uh, social media transparency? Uh, I, would, I would say this, okay, and I, I, it comes to mind, and I'm reluctant to say it, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I don't mean to say it in a negative way, but it may, it may come across that way, especially to the people on social media. But I love horse racing. I think it's a great sport. And, uh, you know, I've been in it my entire life. And the thing about it is that it, there's a lot of variables to it. OK, there's a lot of in, intangibles and it's a very complex dynamic. I mean, the riders are in the same room and, and, and have somewhat of a camaraderie. Then they go out on a racetrack and, and, and they're competing against each other. Um, it's, it, it, it's got some strange dynamics. And Jeff Mullins, the trainer, um, said something years ago that I think is true to some to some extent. And, I, I, and he caught a lot of flack at the time for saying it, but he said something to the effect that if the average fan and average better knew everything that went into and is involved in getting a horse to a race and on the backside and, and in training and in riding and in racing and all the dynamic, 
they might not never bed, they, you, you know, because it's it's that complex. And he was, oh, how could you say that as a trainer? That's terrible. They wanted to tar and feather him, similar to like they did to, to, to you. And I knew back then, this was, and I'm going back 10, 15, I don't even know how long ago it was he said it, but I'm like, he's right. You know, I've been around the backside enough to know, and I'm not even a horseman, but I've been in the backside uh, uh, enough to know. A lot goes on that the average person doesn't understand, doesn't realize is going on, um, and doesn't know what it goes in to get these horses to compete, you know? And I, um, I agree with what you say. I mean, I think so much, you know, we're talking about trips and getting through and stuff like that. And I think so much, you have to have a, a little bit of luck at sometimes too. Things need to go your way. Things need to fall. 100%, 100%. Because you could be on the best horse and have the worst trip. So even though you finally got to ride this four to five shot that you've been waiting to ride, now three horses blocked you in. You could never get out. And and even if they wanted to, there was no room for them to let you out. So that's just, I, I've, you know, I've written articles about that. There's a difference yeah. between a bad ride and a bad trip. There are yeah. some trips that are just horrendous and it's got you nothing to do with the rider. You know what I mean? You, you yeah, hope everybody- even like breaking from the gate like I, I was on the outside and the horse that's live and I'm like I'm so all I gotta do is get to the front but I'm in the 10 hole I gotta get out I gotta get a good break get out and save ground and, and be in front and I'm good well I think my horse is ready he seems ready and for some reason he just lost his attention and missed the break by not bad but enough now I'm behind horses going oh shh. like I'm like this. Yeah, I'm close. There's so much, you know, from the paddock to the post parade to the starting gate to the load to the break yeah. and then everything else in, in the race. So there, there is a lot. And that's not counting the few weeks leading up to it, you know. That he How about the race. other day I was in a race and we were on, uh, we were on um, post parade and the, the bridle starts to fall off. They forgot to attach the top. Like, Jesus, thank God it happened before the race. And then the other day I got a brand new saddle from Japan. I'm going to the gate. We're about to load, and my right stirrup falls. The keeper, it broke. We had mm-hmm. to go back to the paddock, get a new saddle. But could you imagine that? St- there's so much stuff that happens. Exactly, yeah. and you know, you said something that 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 I'm glad you said. You said, you know, your horse just didn't get, you know, lost focus and just for whatever reason didn't get out of the gate. Now that's another situation that can happen to any rider at any time. And you'll have fans and betters watching, oh, Chantel didn't get out of the gate like she was supposed to on the speed horse and, and automatically blame the rider when re- realistically there was nothing you could have done. Well, it was uh, look at what was- happened. Yeah, to that, the other day, Irad was in the rate, uh, his, his stall and Emma Jane Wilson was on a filly that was really temperamental. And the horse, her horse, everybody was settled. They're about to go. And her horse does something that spooked Irad's horse, it flips, Irad hurts his knee and he's out. So, I mean, there, it's not, wasn't Irad's horse's fault. It was the other horse, but how could anyone control that? It's like, we're talking, I mean, we're, they're still wild animals and we're, you know, we think we can control stuff, but stuff, it, we're just, it, it's, it, it's an illusion. <laughs> we're really good at making it look good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we'll wrap up with this. Um, and, 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 and I'll make it quick. Years ago, when I was a, a kid and first starting to cut school to go to the races, okay, I wasn't even allowed in the racetrack. Okay. And I used to go to Aqueduct and I cut, well, somebody cut a hole out in the fence where me and some other friends of mine, we used to squat, squat down and watch the races right at the top of the stretch, okay? And we would see the horses coming out of the back stretch around the far turn and then run away from us into the stretch. And it gave me a completely different perspective of horse racing because when you watched it there, it was a race. You could hear the breathing, the snorting, um, the bumping, the riders talking, cursing at each other. And Angel Cordero was probably the king of New York at that time and known for wanting to be in one of the most tough and aggressive riders. And I remember, I just have that kind of memory. Um, I remember there was one day that we were there and as they were coming around the turn, there was a rider on the inside and they were screaming and cursing at Angel. Angel, let me out, let me out, I got a horse. MF or MF or they, they, they they were cursing, let me out, let me out. And he... Let the go, okay, okay, okay. And he let him out. And I heard and saw the whole thing. So that's not something new that just started happening now. And 
I saw Angel Cordero get, get, get yelled at and ask somebody to let him out. And he was known as being as tough and aggressive as anybody. And he let this rider out. I don't remember if they won or what happened, but I remember the incident. I remember hearing that kind of hollering and, 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 and stuff like, like, uh, you know, like that going on. So it's part of racing. It's part of racing. Great, uh, your story is a great visual for a movie when they make the next movie about horse racing. That's a cool story. The, the, the little parting thing that all people uh, at Naira, I'm not the one who cut the hole in the fence. That's it. <laughs> Naira holds grudges, they hold grudges. And I'll just say, you know, as someone that puts himself out on social media and does different things, you know, about horse racing, uh, you know. There's people that are always going to bash it. Uh, you know, we're always fighting an uphill battle in certain areas. But I think Chantel, that's why I don't think this bothered her maybe as much as it bothered John. And it's because when you, I mean, she's been a woman in a man's world. There's no way around that. And so she's always had to fight the uphill battle. Um, and uh, the three of us together in horse racing, you know, that's a, there's always going to be detractors. So I think you know, I think as we're in this game longer, we just let things roll off us. We don't take it personal. You know, as long as our friends and family are there for us, I don't think these naysayers, they can say what they want. And, uh, you know, it's at the end of the day, as long as yeah. we're happy with ourselves. So anyways, yeah. thank, thank you. Yeah, thank you too. And one of the greatest uh, quotes my friend told me, Emma Jane Wilson was, uh, you know, lions don't concern themselves with the opinions of sheep. And I'm not saying- all of my friends or my fans or anyone who likes the sport and has a voice, it's really important to have a voice. I love challenge. I love, I love uh, arguing and I love conversation. Um, but sometimes when you don't know what you don't know, you don't know. And when you know, you know, you know. So that's, <laughs> and that's exactly. it. Exactly. And, and there, and there I, are certain things about racing that are subjective and opinion. This in my, I don't believe is one of them. I think this is, uh, you, you know, very objective and it just is you know. whether you understand it or not, you no. know? Yeah, you know and what the, you know. The, the quote of the day, which I'll give Chantal is, yeah. it's cool to be cool. <laughs> it's cool to be cool. <laughs> yeah. And, and it was very cool of you to come on uh, and, 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 and kind of deal with this he head on when you really didn't have to and have absolutely no obligation. To well, I love you and I love coming that. on your show. And I yeah, love no, it. I feel it. Yeah, no, we feel the same. And, uh, yeah. Thank you. And you you're know. so knowledgeable. It's fun when speaking with people who get it. It's awesome. So, And I love your show. So anytime. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All the best to you. I'll stop the recording now and then we'll uh, okay. we'll say, say goodbye off camera. Nobody does it better.